I am here with Gregory Russo, a 2021 NFL draft prospect, a defensive end from Miami. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thanks for having me. Now, we're almost a month before the draft and less than a month, actually. So can you just talk about the preparations, the emotions going into it, and what have you been working on leading up to this moment? Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, I stopped working on all the drills for my pro day, so now I'm just working on more like football-related stuff, trying to get in better shape so I'm ready to make a solid first impression on whatever team drafts me. And, you know, I'm, me and my family, we're really looking forward to the draft. You know, it's, it's going to be a dream come true wherever I go. So I'm just – I'm blessed to be in this position that I can't wait. And is, are you and your family actually going to Ohio or are you just going to watch it yeah. from home? Yeah, we're going to go to Cleveland. Awesome. That's super exciting. I'm sure, you yeah. know, a lot of emotions. So how has your family been through this whole entire thing? Supportive? How have they been kind of, you know, feeling this out? They've been very supportive. You know, they're, they're ready for me. They're ready for me to start my new journey. And I'm, I'm super excited, too. So they're, they're just eager to see where I'm going to end up. And for people who don't know, now we see a lot of your tape, a lot of your time in Miami, but can you give us an insight on just who Gregory Russo is, some trials and tribulations you might have gone through throughout your playing mm -hmm. career, and how you are where you are today? Okay, okay. Well, I've been playing football since I was eight years old. I have three brothers, and I, both of my parents work. My mom's a nurse. My dad's a mechanic. And, you know, I got to where I'm at, I feel like, just by, just by hard work, being dedicated, you know, always being locked in and giving my all to the sport of football. And I, I just love the game. So I just, I can't wait to play at the next level. But like I'd say the biggest uh, tribulation or just adversity I faced would be like when I broke my ankle my freshman year, it was tough to bounce back from that. But I, I trusted the, I trusted God, trusted the process. And I was able to come back and have a solid year in my redshirt freshman year. So that's definitely the most adversity I faced. And, you know, when you get an injury like that, of course, the physicality of it, not being able to be out there with your team has to be extremely tough. But can you talk yeah. about the mental side going through it? You said you kind of prayed about it. So yeah. what was that journey like? How did you get back into it mentally? Uh, yeah, it was tough. You know, you really just got to stay strong. I was blessed to have great coaches, great teammates who supported me throughout the process. My parents, everybody was just like um, just helping me stay, keep my spirits up and to stay positive. So I had a great system. I had a great, I had great people around me in general. And that really, I, I feel like went a long way with me coming back the way I did. You're a defensive end. So can you talk about any players in the NFL currently or that have retired that you kind of look up to, whether it's in your position or just around the league? Yeah. I like to watch Calais Campbell for sure. Cause he moves inside. He plays the three, he plays the nose, so he's very versatile. He's also a taller guy like me, so I like the way he uses his hands and keeps his pads down because taller guys like us, it's always a, a struggle to have a great pad level and keep our pads lower because everybody else is shorter than us. So I like Clay's Kim, and I also like to watch Chandler Jones and Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa is a really good one, you know. Yeah, just really a good. few years in, had an injury last year, won rookie of the year the year before, so he's definitely yeah. on for a good mark, definitely a good guy to look up to. Back. Now, you talk about those guys, but right now you're focusing on, I guess, competing with the other defensive ends that are draft prospects as well. So what separates you from these other defensive ends that are going to be in the draft? What separates me, I'd say, is just like my length and my versatility. So I played the zero technique, the three technique. I played the five, the nine. I even drop back and cover sometimes. So I feel like I bring a lot of versatility to a team, and I'll be like a chess piece on defense, where, and I can be used anywhere up and down the line of scrimmage. So that's the biggest thing for me, I'd say. And, you know, you're from Florida. You played in Florida. So how, you know, if you get drafted by a team that's north, a team that plays in the cold, how do you adjust to that? I know I'm sure you travel playing football, but have you ever thought about those kind of adjustments weather-wise? Yeah, I did. Like, imagine getting drafted, like, to Green Bay or something like that. It'd be wild. <laughs> but I feel like I get used to it, though. I mean, like, it's super hot down here. So people from up north probably get drafted down here. So, I mean, it works both ways. So I, I'd have no choice but to get used to that. But I think I'd be fine. I think I'd be fine because I did, like you said, I played in some cold games in college. Right, yeah, of course, like traveling and everything. It's just interesting yeah. to me because, you know, Florida, of course, the climate's a lot different than, as really you said, like a Green Bay where it's cold. So yeah. I'm getting used to. You might got to play in some snow if you get drafted by them. <laughs> Facts. That'd be but, fun, though. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be – I mean, those games are so fun to watch. I don't know about playing in them, but definitely those games are fun to watch. <laughs> Super fun to watch. Day. <laughs> but you're from the Florida area, so who was your favorite team growing up in the NFL? The Dolphins, for sure. Yeah, just you like, like – Tua? I mean, yeah, yeah, I like Tua. I think he's going to be a great player. And, like, just growing up, everybody down here is pretty much a Dolphins fan. 
So watching them, they, they had they had a couple of good years. They haven't been amazing since they had Dan Marino, but they had a couple – they went to the playoffs a few times. They played the Ravens one year, Steelers one year. So I've always been a Dolphins fan. Yeah, that's awesome. Homegrown, basically. Yeah, facts. <laughs> what if you got drafted by the Dolphins? I mean, would that be like a dream come true for you? Yeah, that would be insane. To like to play high school football in South Florida and then college and pro, that would be crazy. Yeah, that's that would be absolutely crazy. Yeah, I'm guessing like, we're gonna see. <laughs> yeah, that's like the trifecta right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but you talked about your three brothers a little bit ago, your mom and your dad. Can you talk about your biggest role model growing up and who you kind of see as your role model right now, whether that's your family or just mm -hmm. somebody that gives you advice while you're making this transition into the league? I'd say definitely my parents for sure. You know, they're always like my sounding board with every decision I make. So they're always supporting me, they're always guiding me, but also my brothers, I lean on them heavily as well. And that's super important. It sounds like you have a great support system from where you're at right now. Definitely. And that's awesome. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Pro Day. Now, a lot of the scouts looked at you, a very good Pro Day. And I just want to ask you, what were the emotions and the preparation, you know, getting ready for that, knowing that the Combine wasn't really able to happen this year due to COVID? Mm -hmm. Did that put more stress on that day and a bigger chip on your shoulder? Yeah, it did. I mean, I mean, I feel like it meant more this year. And I feel like I had a solid day. I could have could have done some things better, you know, but that's that's life. You know, you got to live and learn. You got to keep on growing and keep on getting better. So, I mean, but it was a great opportunity to be out there again, to be with Jalen Phillips and Quincy Roche, Brevin Jordan, to be with my guys one last time on Green Tree practice fields in Miami. So it was a blessing to be out there. And I had a lot of fun competing. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I watched some of your tape and everything, and it was just outstanding. You know, Pro Day is one of my favorite days. So. I really love all of those Thank you. super skills that you guys can do. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's real fun. It's, it's crazy. That's awesome. Game day rituals. What do you do before a game? Is there a certain meal you eat or a certain song you listen to? What does that look like, the preparation before a game? Uh, I'd say before a game, I listen to a lot of Young Thug, for sure. Uh, when it comes to meals, I pretty much eat whatever. I try not to eat too much because I don't want to be like get bloated or anything. But I try. <laughs> I, I, one thing I can say is I always drink a Pedialyte before the games. Gotcha. Yeah. Do you ever feel like you have a superstition to like drinking that ever before every game? Pretty much. Like if I have, if I don't drink it, I'll be like, damn. Like I'll feel even more nervous. Probably be like, yo, I'm not gonna have a good game. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. I mean, I'll still, I'll be okay, but I'll definitely feel a little bit weird if I didn't drink one. Yeah, definitely. Now, yeah. you're from the South, so what is your – well, the South, according to here, because we're in New Jersey, I know sometimes people in Florida don't think you're necessarily in the South, but yeah. <laughs> what is the best food down there? What is your favorite go-to thing that you always have to get when you're in Florida? The best food, I'd say uh, – there's a really good Chinese food place by my house that I always eat at. It's called, like, Blue Moon. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Chinese is always good. <laughs> always. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's crazy. Now, what about your campus? What is one place on campus that if somebody was visiting, they would have to go to? By the lake, like at Miami, we have like this, this lake in the middle of our campus. I think it's called like Lake Osceola or something like that. And it's like, it's really beautiful. There's like a fountain in it. And it's like, the campus is like just built pretty much around it. But it's, there's like a little tiny like pond slash river leading up to it. So it's awesome. And it's, it's like in the middle of campus and you can like study. And there's like hammocks out there. It's dope. It's like palm trees. It's like it's like as Miami as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. I'm sure, of course, the weather yeah. down there is probably beautiful all the time, too. So you can definitely yeah. enjoy that. Facts. Up here, not so much. It's kind of cold. And, <laughs> you know, it's a little bit of the I already know. Of the sky. Yeah, is, it, we can, is, it, is it still cold right now in April? It's not bad. It can literally, though, go from like 70 degrees to like 30 degrees in a matter of two days. So it's been a little bit crazy oh. here. Yeah, yeah, but right now it's like 60s. It's been pretty steady for the past week. So hopefully it'll stay like that. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Now, this is a question we have asked kind of all the interviewees that we already had. But if you could only drink one Gatorade color for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, orange. Orange. Orange is undefeated for me. It's undefeated. I've, it's I've been waiting for somebody to say that. That's my favorite. <laughs> so good. Orange is so good. Yeah, it's so, I think it's so refreshing, especially cold. It's just like. It's just it's different. Awesome. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. Now, you're going into the NFL. You're a draft prospect. And, you know, this is very early in your professional career, played in college and high school. But do you have any professional career goals or are you kind of just taking it day by day? 
Uh, I say like I'm really taking it day by day, but I know like I'm gonna give my all to whoever drafts me. I'm try to be the best player I could be. But like for some goals, I, I definitely I'm shooting to win Rookie of the Year. But like I said, I try not to put too much emphasis on the goals because like you can lose sight of like what's right in front of you. So I try to be where my feet are at all times and just focus on like like just winning every single day. You know. Yeah, that's super important. I think it's always good to have goals, but then at the same time, like you said, just giving your all to the team that you're able to be on and just a blessing in itself being chosen to be in the NFL as well. Exactly. Now, have you thought about the reaction that you're going to have when you hear your name called, or do you think that's just going to happen on the spot? I mean, you can't really plan for these things, right? You can't. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I might cry. I might not. I never cried tears of joy, but I mean, I'm going to be so happy. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I can't wait, though. Yeah, and we'll definitely be watching, cheering you on. We're very excited to see where you go in your future. For sure. um, just to round this out a little bit, is there anything else you want to share? You talked about your story a little bit, but is there anything else that you want the world to know about Gregory Russo? Uh, really that just, like, I'm going to give it my all wherever I go. I'm a really hard worker, but I'm also, like, a, a, a solid person off the field, I feel like. Like, I like giving back to the community and just being a positive light in people's lives. And you talk about giving back to the community. Is that something you're looking to do, whatever, you know, city or state you get into? And how do you kind of try to plan to incorporate that once you get drafted? Definitely. Like, I'm interested in, like, helping kids, like, kids in the youth play sports, you know, because I feel like sports is a good way to stay out of trouble and also give you something to look forward to and just give you a dream that you can chase. Awesome. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Gregory. If there's anything else you need from us, just please let us know. Thank you so for much sure. for taking the time to sit down with me today. For sure, for sure.